Pero de eso y más vamos a hablar a continuación porque ah, se nos viene una charla eh, que está pregrabada por la diferencia horaria, eh, pero que sin embargo al final de la charla vamos a lograr estar con eh, Nikhil Aguarwal, que es el hombre encargado de dar esta charla, quien es Senior Manager de Cybercloud Deloitte and Touch en Singapur. Por eso la diferencia horaria está desde Singapur. Así que primero vemos esta charla, los invito a escucharla bien y después de eso respondamos todas las preguntas, va a responder todas las preguntas que sean necesarias en el horario en que nos queda en este estudio de manera virtual conectadísimo para que ustedes participen. Nos quedamos entonces con eh, Nikhil Aguargal eh, y esto es eh, su conferencia acá en 8.8 en Teca. Hello everyone, I hope my voice is loud and clear and it's audible. Uh, without taking a lot of time, I'll just jump right into the topic. I'm sure you are very excited to hear about all the different topics in this conference. And uh, along with other speakers, I'm sure this topic will also be very informative. And in case you have any concerns and questions, just feel free to reserve them for the last part, wherein I'll answer all the questions. I'm doing it remotely, but doesn't mean that we cannot interact. Just feel free to bring all your queries or questions. Pull them back until we have a later on Q&A sessions. So just let's get started. So today's topic I'm taking is how we can secure the containers and Kubernetes deployment for your next uh, projects if you're working on any. Uh, I'll be taking and discussing few best industry practices, tools, and what are the common differences between these two terms and other referring things which we quite often see when we are talking about these two terms. So bear with me and uh, let's get into the topic. Before we start, as uh, customary, I also, like who am I? I'll be saying that currently I'm working as senior manager with Cloud Risk Advisory with Deloitte. I'm based out of Singapore. I, am, I consider myself as blockchain, DeFi and Kubernetes enthusiast. And I also do a lot of regular speaking and panelist sessions in various conferences around the globe. Uh, I love teaching and building community and that's one of the reasons I'm participating in the conferences as well. To summarize, I'll say that I'm engineer by qualification, a consultant by profession, a hacker at heart and a researcher by passion. I have been in the industry for quite a while now and I have seen a lot of new technologies. Uh, I started with a lot of new technologies and have been working in many. So I'm quite excited in, with this whole cybersecurity domain itself, new new engineers coming inside, researchers coming in the technology. So I'm looking forward to contribute and make sure that uh, this new domain of containers and Kubernetes is something which is touched upon and uh, is not something which is very new to everyone. So I'll be sharing my thoughts on that. In case you want to reach out to me after the, my talk or any other questions you may have which is not clear during the session, you can reach out to my socials. I have shared my Twitter, LinkedIn, which you can reach out to reach to Nikhil. For all the Gen Zs, if you are not on Twitter or LinkedIn, I also have shared my Instagram. You can reach out to me there as well. So let's get into the agenda next. So in this session, I'll be talking about the containers and the virtual machines. What are the basic differences? What we had talked about? Is this uh, like is really containers something which is uh, which will overtake the virtual machines or what are the benefits? So I'll touch on those topics. I'll also talk about the benefits of containers over the virtual machines. Then we'll talk about Kubernetes and Dockers, like what are the key differences and why we are using these terms when we talk about the containers. Uh, later, we'll see some best practices on secure deployments of containers and Kubernetes. Uh, in the last section of this talk, I'll talk about the common tools, which common tools and the players in the container security space right now, and uh, which you should be aware of. Uh, I'm not uh, like trying to name or uh, particularly highlight any, it's just something which I'm aware of and you should know who are the key players. Let's go to the first part, which is virtual machines and the containers. So as you might know that containers are like kind of a form of operating system virtualization. A single container might be used to run anything from a small microservices or a software processes to a large application as well. Inside a container like uh, there could be all the necessary executable binary codes, libraries and configuration file which can be included and uh, compared to any kind of a virtual machine or like a server, virtualization approach which you normally see in a traditional environment 
it makes container more lightweight and portable so that is like one of the major reason if you see from this architecture diagram so if you see the basic building block here a lot of things remains a constant like for example in a virtual machine kind of environment we have an infrastructure operating system which is being shared and then we have the hypervisor which has its own guest operating system and then further libraries and applications which is running on the virtual machine in case of containers the sharing of the layer is also at the operating system so the host operating system layer is also being shared and then there is a container daemon which runs wherein all different kind of applications and libraries can run on that particular container daemon so in that case it makes it 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 breaks the particular host operating system layer from the overall architecture that saves a lot of space and overhead from a container and that's why they are called more lightweight and like the reason why they are more portable so that's one of the reasons from our architecture basic architecture wise which uh, which makes containers more handy or portable uh, i'll be taking more details what like what are the key differences between virtual machines in the container in the next slides so <laughs> as we see like a basic container joke yeah so containers are just lightweight vms right yes definitely but that's not the only thing there are other reasons why we prefer containers over the virtual machines and what are they let's see them so i'll say that like these are few criteria which have been identified and we are comparing virtual machines and docker images or containers in this case under these areas so first from a os support perspective virtual machine as we have seen from a previous architecture it takes a lot of uh, space wherein dockers contains less space but from a boot up perspective like virtual machines takes a lot of time because of the operating system it has wherein dockers are very fast from a boot perspective from a performance perspective again because of the excessive size of the virtual machine it makes them like unstable from a performance perspective compared to docker scaling a uh, virtual machine is definitely difficult to scale up because every time you need to consider a host os layer wherein in docker it's very easy to scale up and efficiency wise as well like docker being very easily scalable and portable makes it more efficient uh, portability is something which we have seen from architecture that uh, like virtual machines are less and have a lot of issues when we talk about the portability like from a dependency perspective wherein the docker main main feature of the docker is that it is a bit portable uh, space allocation wise virtual machine like uh, the data volumes cannot be shared because everybody have their own operating systems and have os os data volumes wherein docker being like sharing the same operating system they have they can be they can easily share the same data volumes so this is like a common um, i'll say differences uh sometimes people also confuses container technologies with virtual machines or server virtualization technology but uh, there are not much differences there are like uh, it is completely different from the vms i'll say virtual machines on one case run on hypervisor environment where each virtual machine should include its own operating system as we have seen from the architecture and it should have its own binaries libraries and application file of course this will what it will do is it will consume a lot of memory space as we have seen from here where in like in case of containerization they share the same operating system or the kernels also sometimes which is very light in size and like just from an example perspective it could be in just a megabytes and this means like the containers are very lightweight and can be used anywhere and it takes just couple of seconds to start them so versus like the gigabytes of the virtual machines we just have like kind of megabytes of container images which can make our job easier so that's one of the reason why containers are getting more popular right now and a lot of uh, kind of uh, industries are like going towards the containers as we move towards the cloud okay going to the next topic which is like we're talking about what are the benefits of the containers i have a lot but let me start with first like in simple words containers like makes building deploying and scaling cloud native application easier than ever like that's the best and the simplest i can put it on uh, what does it mean is like uh, for any cloud native developers like the biggest benefits of containers if i have to say could be that uh, it like developers try to avoid as much as 
as much friction as possible when they are moving their code from like testing from a dev environment to a production environment as like when they package their application they they like it always comes with an error like there's you see you have you might have heard about the typical problems that it runs on my system but not the other production system so those kind of issues can actually be pro solved easily wherein a developer can actually package their application code as a container and then can push that container image anywhere be it production deployment anywhere environment and it will definitely run because now you are packaging it in a container images so that's one of the major benefit that it eliminates that friction and that issue of uh, running it on, on my system uh, from next perspective i'll say that all the dependencies associated with application that are included within the container so this enables application to run very easily and identically across the virtual machine so you don't have to focus on individual applications and their dependencies it will like uh, remove that uh, barrier of dependencies and will make sure that your application is running over the virtual machine bare metal servers or wherever and uh, doesn't mean only on the on-premises environment but even on the virtual clients or the public clouds environment as well so it makes sure that your your application becomes a single source of truth for all the developers so that's another benefit i'll also say like uh, containers take faster build time so like comparative to any vms or anything the flexibility and the portability of containers enables developers to make huge gains on productivity and that was like previously very difficult to achieve when we were talking about the virtual machines and working in a virtual environment another benefit i'll say container has is the confidence uh, which developers get when they are deploying their application because they know that this application whichever platform they are running is will be working because it is irrespective of an operating system layer so that's another thing which is very uh, very important when we talk about the containers it removes that particular mindset between or that fear within the developers they feel more confidence when writing new code or deploying building new application uh, another thing i'll say the benefit would be that from a collaboration perspective like multiple teams can use the containers and they can work on the individual parts of the application without disrupting the code so because of the container based and the reason why this container is getting popular is because the application is not just now a single stack it's working on different different containers multiple container clusters will be running so if you want to redeploy if you want to make any changes within a code or in a particular uh, particular uh, service you don't need to change the overall application you may just need to work on individual sections of that particular cluster container cluster and you can collaborate with different teams make sure that it is working not interrupting the overall function of the application so that's another important thing which i think is a very important part of containers and what makes them important um our typical question would be uh, in short if i have to put summarize anything of this uh, why containers and why they are important I'll say that um, it runs on any operating system, be it Linux, Windows, or anywhere. It runs anywhere, like on-premises or cloud. You choose where you want to run it, it will. Any type of application architecture, so if you're running in a traditional monolith applications, definitely it will work. And if you're working on a more modern, modern application architecture, like any microservices-based architecture, containers are the best fit for these kind of architectures, and it makes your life easier. Uh, from a language perspective it supports any languages so that's another reason that why people prefer using containers when they are talking about the new modern de app deployments app developments so these all makes uh, containers very special like uh, in any new IT, IT architecture cloud native application still needs to be secure and container environments uh, I, I feel will bring them a range of uh, cyber security challenges involving like images container host all these kind of things which we had just talked about this all things definitely helps but it also becomes will come become uh, some cyber security challenges as well so we have to talk about those cyber security challenges now so in the next few slides i'll talk about the cyber security challenges and what we like what kind of things uh, people are using this for
uh, before I move towards the next topic, which is like the Kubernetes and the Docker, as you have seen from my slide, I just want to talk about the few use cases of the containers, like what currently organizations are using it. So I think like the first major use cases is the lift and shift. So basically right now, a lot of organizations are using containers to migrate their existing application into the modern environment. That is one of the classic example of lift and shift. Then I'm thinking, I think the refactoring of existing applications, like a lot of time, uh, if uh, lift and shift is not possible, but some part of the application can be refactored in a modern application. That is another area where our organizations are considering the shift to containers uh, for the new application i am 100 percent sure a lot of applications are completely 100 percent going towards a new container based native application so for any new application projects if you are developing a new application right from the scratch uh, i what i see around in the industry is that they are going with the container native application that is the future definitely um, for like uh, a, a lot of time for from an environment perspective from a customer perspective in order to improve their customer experiences and like the support of other mm -hmm. services like for a microservices based architecture that time also like distributed application and microservices are used which can actually isolate the deployment and whenever required it can scale up the individual container while building an application so that is another area which is being used where the containers are very popular uh, from other perspective i see that uh, like during the devops support like when we are talking about the ci cd ci cd uh, pipelines and during the devops container technology is like something which is very uh, which is very promising as it is streamlining the overall build test and deployment from the same container images so you don't have to uh, re-scan everything again and again you can like certify make the architecture immutable make your container images immutable so that is another benefit wherein like uh, another use case i'll say organization is using right now uh, also apart from all these things deployments and uh, the, the faster deployments and the cloud native architecture i think containers are also used a lot of time to deploy and support like similar processes from a background perspective like kind of uh, etl functions or batch jobs for those kind of things also uh, a lot of organizations are using containers now so from a usage perspective uh, from uh, i'll say from from their functioning perspective containers definitely a very very good tools for the future for the technology but as i said earlier like all these uh, new challenges as much as interesting these container environment seems they will definitely bring new cybersecurity challenges from images and containers host runtime these all orchestrations perspective so we need to be protected against all these new technologies and that's what we will be discussing in the few next upcoming slides so the next interesting topic is the docker and the kubernetes and how they do relate to the container so we talk about this uh, containers and when whenever we talk about the containers i think two terms which are completely indifferentiable is the docker and the kubernetes so today we will discuss what are the differences between the kubernetes and docker and how do we plan to use them in there like uh, from a container perspective so if you are like already using the container environment and you are familiar with you would have talked about this uh, you would have heard about these two popular tools which are we use to build and manage these containers these like the docker and the kubernetes of course uh, docker is very popular runtime environment which is used to create build software containers it also uses docker images like uh, kind of like your container images to deploy containerized application and it can it can or like any software in various environment you can use it from development to production or the testing environment uh, docker is completely open source so that's one of the benefits and it can work on any environment including linux microsoft or like from on premises or cloud based infrastructure so a lot of positives when you talk about the docker from uh, when we talk about the containerized application it can definitely get complicated when we increase the when we talk about the scalability or the increase in number of containers and specifically in the production environment where uh, many might require hundred or thousand of separate containers so it is during that time during like the major runtime container runtime uh, 
Docker will definitely benefit and they will use tools to orchestrate and manage all these individual containers which are running in the operations. So that's the time wherein this Docker and the Kubernetes are actually coming in the picture. The, these orchestrate your container run container operations. Kubernetes is also something which is like orchestrate the operations of multiple containers mm -hmm. and it works in harmony along with the containers. It manages areas like uh, using underlying infrastructure, resources for containerized application such as uh, amount of compute, network or storage resources. So these are like few areas which they works on. They also have like orchestrations uh, like this orchestration of Kubernetes and Docker Swarm in this case. They, the major benefit of these are that it makes it makes it easier to automate and scale the container based workload so that during your live production environment it can satisfy or it can work based on the kind of environment we are having or the like the requirement application is having so that is one of the major in use of kubernetes and docker uh, from a difference perspective as as we are talking about the differences between the kubernetes and docker so docker is like a kind of a platform but uh, when we talk about the orchestration platform docker has its own docker swarm wherein kubernetes is a individual orchestration platform from now we'll compare the uh, compare docker swarm versus kubernetes under the five major areas the first one definitely is from a scaling or a scaling perspective when we talk about like how orchestration is important the major reason why like uh, kubernetes being very popular out of docker swarm or any other orchestration like openshift and there are a few other uh, docker uh, say, sorry container orchestration platforms available in the market but out of them i'll say that uh, the the most popular one is the kubernetes and one of the reason is because kubernetes supports auto scaling compared to others so that's one of the reason why a lot of uh, developers or organization when they move towards containers and the orchestrations they tend towards the kubernetes from a community perspective i say honestly both have quite good community however kubernetes because of being more widely popular have a more active community uh, from a clustering perspective like uh, docker swarm it's pretty easy to start a cluster it has its own advantage wherein kubernetes is a bit complicated process wherein you need to identify the correct way which you want to operate like from kubectl or maybe your etcd different different ways are there so the it's a bit difficult when it comes to kubernetes but still it has its own advantages from a api capabilities perspective like uh, docker swarm because it's a docker own com product it is limited to only supporting the docker apis wherein the kubernetes is the reason is that it can it is not the agnostic to docker it can overcome your constraints of docker and docker apis as well so that's another reason why it is being widely used um I'll say from a production deployment perspective, like uh, a lot of applications are not uh, much deployed on Docker Swarm when we talk about the Kubernetes. Kubernetes is like uh, deployed at various scale amongst organization and it is very popular as I say. So it is like definitely one of the preferred choices. Uh, a lot of organization are actually using it uh, from a, from like from an orchestration or managed services perspective as well when we talk about the cloud native so like in the next slide i have tried to compare the what are the current applications or current uh, or current uh, not just not the application but current uh, uh, current uh, utilization of kubernetes and over the cloud deployment so when we talk about aws gcp and azure uh, these are all like they all have their own managed services when it when we talk about the kubernetes so like aws has eks gcp has gke and azure has eks and if you see like uh, they a lot of uh, clients are preferring the managed kubernetes service and uh, across any platform you to see and that's one of the reason why i say that uh, when we talk about the cloud native deployments these all technologies are very very useful only challenge for us is that the more promising they seem the more we have to be concerned about the security we need to know what are the cyber security challenges for these kind of deployments because these are very new we should not just deploy and then think about it it should not be an afterthought we should 
to think about the security when we are trying to deploy it and we should follow the best practices so in the next section of the slides now we'll be focusing on the best practices when we talk about the deployments of the containers contain deploying the security securing containers and the kubernetes so here we are ready with our lightsabers let's go and secure these container deployments in the next ones so when we talk about the container security i think the major part i'll highlight is that there are six major areas where the different challenges are there and uh, uh, different uh, uh, paths are there when we talk about the container security when the different challenges uh, first one i'll say is the open source supply chain risk after like uh, these recent attacks when we talk about uh, the supply chain attacks are getting uh, more popular between the bad actors so this is another very important is when we talk about the container security uh, image and compliance risk host operating system risk risk in the registry where we have all the system images stored then the runtime or the network related risk and then the last would be the orchestration related risk like the platforms we are using we just talked about the docker swarm and the kubernetes so these platform which we are using during our deployment these are have their own form of risk so the from a challenges perspective or the risk perspective there are many containers we cannot just look at the positive side of the container we also have to see the untouched side from a security perspective and these all risks are important like what kind of different uh, things would be there and what we have to secure and containers like specifically the users who are using the containers need to ensure that they have a purpose build full stack security to address like this vulnerability management compliance runtime protection and network security requirement of their application if they are not focusing on those areas it will be it will make their life very very difficult so this these are like the six areas which i feel are challenges from a security perspective in the next slide i'll talk about what should we do from a best practices so not just like identifying the challenges but from a from a security perspective what should be our next steps what we need to do so let's see one by one uh, to individually for everyone so talking about the image and the compliance risk i'll say that uh, when we talk about the docker or container images we need to ensure that we have a vulnerability management tools present which scans the new images added to your registry or whenever a developer is trying to use any new images like uh, docker image or any container images they should be scanned using a vulnerability management solution and if possible you should integrate these tools to your devops pipeline if you have a devops pipeline make sure that you have these tools integrated with your pipeline so that these new technologies yeah, like uh, whenever you're building any new pipeline or any new application you can use already whitelisted images from a previous scan make those images immutable as we say from an architecture's perspective so that like that risk is minimized I'll also suggest that you should also implement some quality gates when we talk about the vulnerabilities from each stage perspective. So not like just from a deployment stage, but right from like the build, test and deploy stages, different, different stages of your DevOps pipeline. You should have some quality gates, some checks which should ensure that your deployment or your images does not have any particular risk from a compliance perspective. Second, I'll say from a registry perspective, since containers are made of libraries, binaries and application code, it is critical for all the enterprises to establish like an of official container registry in their organization. And it will be like the first step of building the security, I'll say, and it will be a first step to their DevSecOps pipeline or DevSecOps journey, because then they'll have the overall visibility of what images are being used. They're not just like pulling the images runtime from the internet, which will bring in the risk of, let's say, open source or the like supply chain attacks from a completely unknown images and that. So a container registry, what it does is it provides a convenient, a centralized meaning of storing, distributing application images. A lot of application right now like can have like tens or thousands of images stored in their registry because registry is like central and it is a way in, in which containerized environment operate. It is very important for us to secure this registry as well. So any kind of intrusion or vulnerabilities within the registry, we should like know about it at 
as soon as possible and it provide us an op also an opportunity of compromising that particular application which is running so what we can do we can continuously monitor these registry registries for any changes in let's say any status of the vulnerabilities if there are new vulnerabilities within the registry we should know about it so a continuous monitoring or a security scan should be there on the registries whenever we are pulling let's say new images from uh, from anywhere it should be make sure that we, it's, we are pulling it the new images from a trusted sources and they are security scan and uh, also the i'll say that you should not uh, like uh, just f completely blindly follow this kind of practices of monitoring i'll also suggest that uh, you should log down the server or the host registry using some secure access policy so having a good access policies or like uh, having some kind of uh, rule based access control matrix to who can access when what kind of things they can access that also helps when we talk about the registry and how we can reduce the risk related to the registries then going to the next one which is the orchestration related or like kubernetes and docker so container orchestration is definitely a process wherein it helps to enact or like make sure that you have proper access control to prevent the risk from over privilege account so a lot of time we can have some over privileged users accessing it and that can like relate issues to the network or some kind of like lateral movements over the network so by having proper iam in cloud security and like uh, some least privileges model if you are following a defense in depth kind of a model what you can do is like in docker and kubernetes both you can expl explicitly whitelist and implement the security on the infrastructure teams and ensure that the users only perform command based on their appropriate roles they don't do anything which is beyond their roles so that kind of uh, kind of identity and access management controls you can implement within your docker and your kubernetes so that's another good part also what you can do is you can also protect your pod to pod communication and limit your damages from the attackers by like removing the lateral movement through the environment so securing any kind of front end services would be another step you can implement when we talk about the orchestration related risk so this is uh, another interesting uh, risk which happens then from a network or a runtime perspective like containers all most of the times is like running in the runtime and we can identify new vulnerabilities in the containers runtime even if they have scanned initially in a build stage there may be some runtime vulnerabilities which can come from a code so those kind of runtime scanning is also important and uh, it is i'll say one of the most difficult part when it comes to container stack because like unlike the traditional security tools it is there is no nothing as of now that mature which is defined when we talk about the container continuous monitoring definitely now there are a few more tools but still like from a completeness perspective they are still uh, i'll say in a trial base trial basis uh, i'll say like uh, some organization should also leverage uh, runtime protection runtime encryption of the containers that is one of the important key aspect because you know don't know where your container images may run so using a container runtime container encryption runtime container protections are definitely important they will help to ensure that you are compliant you are cyber safe and uh, a lot of vendors are actually working in this particular domain as well when we talk about the runtime security of containers one i have in mind would be fortanix they have this runtime encryption which is very critical when we talk about the container security so definitely these kind of new technologies these kind of new solutions are something which you should keep an eye on when we talk about the container deployments and how you can avoid those kind of risk from a host OS perspective, I'll say that uh, try to use minimalistic operating systems to reduce your attack services. Try to use uh, kind of uh, hard coded or like kind of something which is already, um, I'll say, best uh, compliant or limited functionality kind of operating system, not something which has uh, everything opened up. So, limited processes, limited ports open. So, a hardened operating system sh is suggested when you should use also your operating system should undergo a continuous vulnerability scans so that anything which is detected at a kernel level or maybe operating system level it should be 
flagged right from the start the last one i'll say is the open source supply chain risk so like uh, tools like source code source composition analysis uh, these kind of tools will be helping a lot to uh, to avoid these supply chain attacks so recently us also has released this uh, bill wherein it has been made mandatory to have a software bill of materials for all the applications of the software so this will be a, something which will work on this area wherein you can have this uh, remove the supply chain risk by knowing or using these source composition analysis tools and checking from the vendor where you are buying these tools what is their software bill of materials so that you are like you have your own due diligence when it comes to the risk associated with it so i'll say this are some some of the uh, situation wherein like how you can use and make sure your next containers when you are talking about are secured you make sure different different at different different levels of your pipeline or container deployment cycle you can implement these different security gates to ensure that you are protected your container containers applications are protected but this is just one part we also have to secure the orchestration that is your kubernetes so as the button says we need to see about the kubernetes so for, from a kubernetes perspective i'll say that from the overall build deploy run pipeline uh, there are basic things which we need to ensure like we have seen build deploy run already right now from a container perspective that you should scan the image you should remediate anything which you are finding you can see make sure that you have limited privileges running when we are trying to deploy that particular container images and then later on from a running like during a runtime perspective you should have a continuous monitoring you don't use like default namespaces or network settings those kind of things when you are trying to run that particular app container images but from a kubernetes perspective i'll say that uh, updating the kubernetes very frequently whenever new releases are there is very important making sure your api is secure because kubernetes is all about the api server so securing your kubernetes api is something which is very important like you should know it like uh, though kubernetes has like several built in security advantages like uh, container images are usually replaced not patched or updated which leads to better version control it also increases a lot of opportunity for exposure so kubernetes like because it is relatively new and complex technology i'll say we don't have enough talent to fully manage and secure it right now and uh, that makes it highly attractive to hackers i'll say so whenever we are addressing kubernetes security it is nearly impossible to separate the kubernetes cluster from the other layers of the cloud computing and hence these layers like i'll say include not just the application but also the code itself the container images the kubernetes cluster and as well as the cloud or the networking layer which we have which we always see when we are trying to deploy so all these are different areas which we needs to emphasize when we are talking about securing the kubernetes each layer of this like uh, builds on the previous layer so the what makes us like whenever we are trying to achieve a defense in depth this make sure that we have to make sure that each of these layers we have to protect them at an individual part so not just the code or the container image or the kubernetes cluster but we have to make sure that we are securing each of them at an individual layer so this is something which we have to be focused on okay so this is the next part and in this section what i wanted to do is i want to cover the overall flow of uh, cloud native application deployment in a tradi in a new modern devops pipeline so like let's say if you are using a kubernetes based orchestration to deploy any new website on a container what are the different security checks which you have to undergo along with the different stages of the devops pipeline i want to cover in this part whole flow like that so i divided into three four stages first let's see like what you need to do when we talk about the kubernetes security during your build stage so right from a build stage perspective i'll say you should scan your image and the source code in any application you are when you are implementing like we normally do various scanning tools like sas dast iast sca you also these all will ensure that your code is as secure as possible uh, i'll also say do like you don't forget uh, to use open source code which is like uh, like most of the most of them most of your application may be using open source code so what i'll say is like uh, 
you should have something to make sure that your open source code is secure so like a library checker or open source checker os open source checker those kind of things should be important you should implement like uh, automate your workflows to ensure that vulnerabilities are remediated as soon as possible and code is secure also what you can do is you can like uh, make sure that you are using the most updated image available as it will be most secure image available so destroy anything which is outdated or it is like really not possible to pass them so that is something which you can do during your build stage during your deployment what you can do is uh, first thing I'll say is don't deploy images from unknown sources don't do it if you don't know the providence of any images where it comes from you if you don't trust it don't deploy it do the scanning of the images during that deployment you might have already find the vulnerabilities since your image was last scanned in development but make sure that you are also doing a continuous image scanning later after the development stages as well also use image admission controls like uh, if any image violates your organization security policies or prevent a container from running it should uh, make sure that you need higher privileges to make sure that it is running with that particular privilege so make sure that you have some kind of a quality checks or control gates in case any vulnerabilities are found in your pipeline so it should not go to the deployment it should need additional value of it i also suggest that you should limit the privileges which are used by containers so don't give or don't make sure that they are running with the highest privileges make sure that they follow the least privileges model that will really help in securing your deployments and i'll say that don't use your defaults uh, like use your defaults uh, when we talk about the rbac or let's say network policies so ignore or avoid using the default configurations it will not be a best decision you will make so enable the role based access control which you have in the container orchestration and it will help you to regulate your access based on the roles which your individual users or services may have so that will be another good uh, best practices when we talk during the deployment phase but what happens like after the build and the deploy the next phase is the production and from the production also we need to make sure that we have some security checks there and what we can do is we can scan images in the production like uh, as we have talked about earlier we may have missed out some new vulnerabilities during that time or maybe some new are of like came during after the deployment so to make sure that we are meticulous we about the content scanning of our images that's one of the important part what we can also do is we can secure and inspect our network using maybe a container firewall which will like kind of apply any network security techniques to our cloud native kubernetes environment so not just like relying on the traditional environment but using some container firewall is also something very important aspect which we can work on we can also like uh, make sure that our network traffics are like creating uh, for network traffic is following and uh, like creating and defining the po creating like the network cluster tra traffic basically is following or working as per the policies we have defined on the cluster if uh, if you are like uh, if you are not able to control those network accesses in and out of the container applications that is a red flag yeah <laughs> so make sure that we have that network policies defined at an orchestrator level also i'll say that uh, you should establish the security boundaries using namespaces they will allow you to divide the cluster resources between multiple users so that is definitely to go uh, from a from a security policies for the pods perspective i'll say like pods are the smallest execution unit in kubernetes and that's what are used to organize your containers as well so what you can do you can use pod security policies to address issues such as container running as root and if they are running with over privileges so those kind of policies can be used using the pod security policies what we also do i suggest is that uh, when you are replicating any pods or you are trying to like uh, scale up using existing identical behavior try to monitor and analyze the pod so that if you see anything abnormal behavior within the normal behavior like normal something which is going which is not something as usual then you can actually flag it and investigate that particular behavior so that in case of any kind of breaches you know where to look for and what to look so that is very important 
So make sure that you analyze those pods for any kind of abnormal behavior during the deployment after the production. From a Kubernetes perspective itself, like I say that uh, as in the previous slide I have mentioned that you should update the Kubernetes very frequently. So Kubernetes not only covers the like the only three is the, the version. You, if you are not updating Kubernetes regularly, what you will miss is like on any new patches of recently disclosed, vulner disclosed vulnerabilities, you should you will be able to miss that. So try to make sure that every quarter you update your Kubernetes so that you don't expose your organization. I suggest quarterly is a fair enough thing. Kubernetes API is something which is a uh, very important part of this applications, uh, this modern cloud uh, native deployments. So make sure that you don't leave your Kubernetes API publicly exposed and it should only allow access via an internal network or a VPN. It is very, very important. So make sure that you take care of those aspects when you are deploying, uh, deploying your next uh, uh, containers in the DevOps. So this is like the major like on a high level I have talked about what are the various things you can do and it applies for all the type of deployments like not just on the AWS Azure GCP but any kind of cloud you are using be it managed services or be you are the you are managing them yourself but make sure that these are few things which you are taking care when you are deploying using Kubernetes uh, your next application. Cool. So let's go to the next one. Now we talk about the DIY part wherein what are the some popular tools or the vendors who are working on this container based solutions when we talk about just from a security perspective. So there are many like uh, in the last year itself like the container security has uh, container security solution that organization can rely have grown from like uh, both capabilities and sophistications like multifold like regardless of what level of DevSecOps maturity anyone has attained any organization has attained cloud security or like container security specifically are something which are more accessible than ever container security solutions uh, which any organization will be required to adopt there are many solutions like as you can see from the slide itself there are many players out in the market right now but what we are looking is the couple of them so in the next slide i just talked about what are the key areas which you should talk and what are the key players so from from an area perspective i'll say that uh, from a container security like container monitoring container scanning and container firewalls these are the three major areas which are very from, from very highlight from a market perspective which every of these vendors are targeting so like the ability to monitor your registry for vulnerabilities like the same thing we are doing a vulnerability assessment for container monitoring for any cyber security or IT related things and making sure that we timestamp any events which are occurring in the container environment that's like container monitoring from a container scanning perspective like scanning all the libraries and the container images for any vulnerability so doing a basic vulnerability assessment of the container images using the scans that is like another tool which you should have like Prisma Aqua have it Container firewalls are something like uh, not from like uh, traditional firewalls but like a container firewall is something which will inspect and protect all the traffic entering and into your existing container as well as like moving outside from the external network or your legacy application. So most container firewall will run as a sidecar so that they can enable that network security to like to your to other environments which they are running on. Apart from that, you should have like some, there are other tools which what they do is they do a configuration assessment against the best compliance or configurations like CIS or NIST. So these kind of compliance scans or the policy scans are also done by a lot of tools which are very important from a compliance perspective. So tools which you see on the slides, they do support all these kind of different areas which we talked about from a container secure perspective and these are just few which I'm which I know of definitely there will be many and uh, what you can do is you can start exploring these like if you have never heard about this you can start exploring these to see which is best suited for your organization for your application for me I am quite comfortable with a uh, few of them so just make sure that uh, you know about these tools when we are talking about the container security or the Kubernetes security. 
okay so before i end this session i just will want to say that kubernetes and containers are like everywhere with uh, with their rise in popularity security should be a primary concern and not an afterthought as i keep on repeating you should not uh, How are you? I'm good. How about you? Fine, fine. I have a few questions for you. Please, please feel free to ask. Okay. What tool do you recommend for runtime monitoring? Sorry? What tool do you recommend for runtime monitoring? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want to be like, fair, I mean, just to, from a fairness perspective to all the great tools out there in the market. I'll not recommend any one. But as I mentioned in my slides, there are a lot of good players in the market. Like we have Prisma Cloud from Palo Alto. We have various others like we have Aquasec for, from a Trivi perspective. So there are a couple of good tools out in the market. I'll say based on the use cases, budget, and the kind of region you are based out, I suggest you should do a POC of the tools. <laughs> <laughs> what do you recommend for container runtime protection? Again, <laughs> okay, so it's all mostly a common open ending question. So I'll suggest like uh, considering the Palo Alto, I see a Palo Alto logo here, also trained micro. I say Palo Alto has a good tool from a container perspective. Prisma Cloud is there, like uh, a whole cloud native tool. So that's something which I used, uh, I'm quite familiar. Then we have other players like from the similar to Palo Alto, there are other players in the market right now, like Ecosec has uh, container security tools like Privy and uh, Cubans, those kind of tools. So those are other good tools in the market. And similarly, like Checkpoint and other vendors have. So in my slides, I have shared a few of the tools which can be used for like uh, for your monitoring. But as I said, again, like uh, uh, I highly suggest that we it, it the, all the tools depends on like the kind of uh, complexity of your IT infrastructure. So having a deeper understanding speaking with the integration team of these vendors to make sure which tool best fit your organization would be a better approach than like taking my words what are the recommendations in terms of forensic terms when a machine get compromised into a container context oh wow very nice question I suggest like from a forensics perspective, it is something which is like uh, after the incident has happened. So somewhere like your first parameter securities have already failed and you like uh, the incident or the bad actors have already successfully like penetrated within your network or your container images. I think uh, what you can do in that case is the logs. Logs are your friend in that case. So whenever like these kind of forensic investigations or uh, crime investigations are going on, the logs are very important. So there are various types of logs which you can actually see or try to get into the container. One is your like operating system or like uh, simple uh, OS related logs uh, from the container. Second would be your application related logs. So if your container is particularly running on any particular application, that application logs would also be a very good idea when during your forensic investigation. And the third type of logs I suggest is your network logs. So a lot of times, like based on your traffic, how the network is being uh, like accessed right, right from like the ingress and the egress perspective. So the network logs also would be a very important parameters when you are trying to do your forensic investigation. And the last one. What are the recommendations sure. uh, about patching multiple machines into a container environment? Sure, so patching has actually has been a bit easier when we talk about the container images. I have touched down it in my slides as well. So because of if you are using orchestration tools like say Kubernetes or Docker Swarm, then in that case, like patching a container would not be a big issue. Also, what you can do is uh, like I discussed in my slides as well, you can go with a uh, whitelisted images or like a uh, immutable architecture when you are using a container images. So what you will do is you will scan one container images and then you can make it as a base baseline, which would be used in rest of the 
applications or your development team. So you can use that particular method like patch one machine or patch one container image and then use that as a baseline tool for the overall application development. So that would be a good strategy. Okay. Thanks very much for your time, for your knowledge again, and for the time to share with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks, guys. Nice. See ya. Y continuamos en 8.8 en TK, onceava versión. Y recuerden que ya parte de inmediato Kaspersky en el stand de Kaspersky, desde este momento hasta la una, un poquito pasado, eh, preguntas con premio. Los participantes deben ver un video en su stand y responder una pregunta. Eh, obviamente la pregunta es parte del video. Tienen que ver el video y responder la pregunta al video para participar en los premios que Kaspersky tiene para ustedes en el stand virtual que está increíble y que tiene actividades maravillosas y premios realmente notables. Así que dense una vuelta de inmediato. Y recuerden que a las dos también se repite el video de Kaspersky en el stand de Kaspersky. Pueden participar respondiendo a esta pregunta. Y Palo Alto también eh, a la 1.50, de 1.52 en el break de la tandita y desde las eh, 15.10 a las 15.20 realizarán un sorteo con premios sorpresas en su stand virtual para que se traslade la comunidad al panel lateral de Pine, vaya a donde están los patrocinadores y se acerque a los stands virtuales que tienen contenido propio que está funcionando en paralelo al día de hoy. Es una feria virtual. Usted está viendo acá el escenario central y en paralelo puede revisar todo el contenido que tiene para ustedes esta onceava versión de la conferencia ciberseguridad más importante de nuestro país y una de las más importantes de Latinoamérica. Podemos decir eso tranquilamente. Vamos a tomarnos una pequeña pausa donde vamos a saludar a nuestros patrocinadores y volvemos de inmediato porque... Eh, continúa la tarde, a continuación viene Pedro Fortuna y el doctor Yasmin Nagra para que conversemos justamente eh, y eh, tengamos más información de estas charlas académicas, técnicas especiales de 8.8 11 años capacitando educando y expandiendo la palabra de la ciberseguridad volvemos de inmediato